worship is anything that pleases God. When you get up out of your bed and you just had a bad night and you say, God, I just thank you for waking me up today. Guess what? God looks down and he smiles. He says, thank you for worshiping me. Because you just acknowledged the end of the day of waking me up. Anything that we do that brings pleasure to God, anything that we do that pleases God, is a form of worship. You don't have to hear a worship song because there's no such thing as a worship song. There's no such thing as a praise song. Anything that brings pleasure to God is worship or praise. You guys remember that teaching? Don't ever forget it. Listen, I'm going to be kind of like all over the place, but uh, for those of you that are new, this is how I do it. Don't try to put me in a box. Don't try to traditionalize me. I'm untraditional. I might bust out in a rap song or start singing an old school song and quote a scripture at the same time. But listen to the point. Don't listen to the fat funny man. Pay attention to the words that are coming out. A lot of you like to look at my body and I'm like, hey, 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 hey. Oh, I do have a new shirt on today. How many of you been enjoying the series, God Smiles? Well, I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. I'm so sorry. You know, it was supposed to be a five-part series, so now it's still going to be five parts. But now we have changed it from God's smile. And we talked about it. I'm going to just do a recap. We, we talked about, number one, was God's smile when we love Him supremely. And we talked about what the word supremely means. And uh, we, we talked about how if we really think we love God, it made us examine, do we love Him supremely? You know, it, it took us to a whole other level that opened up our understanding that you know, we say we love God, but do you love Him like Noah did? We use Noah as an example of this whole series of how He loved God supremely. And then we went into part two, where God says God smiles when we trust Him completely. And we talked about what does that mean to trust Him completely? It means like that song says, I'll trust you. In the good times and the bad times, even though I can't see how I'm going to get through this, I'll trust you. When I ain't got no rent money, when I ain't got no money to feed my kids, and I got no job, I'll trust you. And the Bible says, do we trust God like Noah did? Do we trust him enough that even when he asks us to do something, or even when we find ourselves in a situation, do we trust him? And then we went on to the, the last one last week was... God smiles when we obey Him wholeheartedly. And we found ourselves short on obedience because we realize that there's partial obedience that Moses had and then there's full wholeheartedly obedience that Noah had. And we use the illustration of both of them of what caused Moses not to enter in because he chose to have partial obedience. And let me tell you something, people. When you walk in partial obedience, it is the same as disobedience. And God requires that we obey Him wholeheartedly with all the fullness and understanding and completeness that He asks us to do. And so now, here comes the finale. And it's going to be two or three weeks. Because the Holy Ghost just blew my wig back. I was just noting and noting and noting. I said, okay, Scripture, that's just too much. He said, break it down, son. I said, thank you, Father. Because I couldn't preach you guys walk out of here just confused so I'm gonna give you a little bit about it but here's what here's the synopsis here's the sum of everything we've been talking about God smiles God smiles when we love him supremely God smiles when we trust him completely and God smiles when we obey him wholeheartedly if you love God supremely trust him completely obey him wholeheartedly what does that equal totally surrender so the way the Holy Ghost says you're gonna finish this the total surrender. So the topic and the title, part one, part two, is totally surrendered. What does that look like? What does that feel like? What does that smell like? Can I do it? Am I there? How close am I? How far am I? When am I going to get there? Well, you know, I like definitions. So let's get started. Totally surrendered. Totally surrendered. Totally surrendered. You know, there's a million songs about being surrendered in the gospel, right? There's some old school songs, some new songs. Before I start this, how many by the show of hands can say that you are totally surrendered to God? <laughs> I, love this. I love it, I love it, because you know what? When we get done with this series, just like the last one, how many believe that you can do greater things than Jesus, as he says in John 14, and nobody raised their hand? But when we got done with the encouragement series, everybody raised their hand. 
So that means we grew. And my word, my job is to impart the word of God because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. And as I impart it unto you, you to receive it, like I always say, and put it where? That word have I hid in my heart. Why do you hide it in your heart? Why? Because who else likes to go mess with your heart? Satan. Mm, Sam. Sam likes to get in there and, and we, we, we weave it. And we construct it and take out compassion and take out love and fill it with hatred and unforgiveness. You know, that stuff, it goes in your heart. So that's why God says that word. David said, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So when the devil comes to sin, when the devil comes to torment, when the devil comes to attack you, he can't find it. Guess what? Because it's hidden in your heart. Oh, I think we all got a sweet part in our heart, a sweet spot. I don't even know where it's at, but it's got to be something in there that's just set aside for God. I think that's what we talk about, how we are kind of wired, hardwired to God. I think it's in that spot that we find that sweet spot in our heart. Amen? What does it mean to surrender? Well, before we start, we have to look at the definition of surrender. Now, I'm about to blow your mind back with surrender means. Because some of you are going to wear that badge really well today. But guess what? It's a process. Oh, thank you, God, for processing. We may be here today, but we move a little closer until we become E.B. Surrendered. You see, the first thing you got to do is surrender before you can be surrendered. Oh, interesting. So the definition of surrender means to agree to stop fighting. Some of y'all been fighting and fighting and fighting. You're fighting an invisible ghost somewhere. You're fighting so bad. You're fighting God so bad. You're fighting your flesh all day long. Stop fighting. Surrender. <laughs> but I need it. I, I, I can't live without it. I, I, I don't know. I've had it for so long. Yeah, I know. We're going to get rid of that. Because we're talking about to love God supremely, to trust Him completely, and to obey Him wholeheartedly is to surrender. You can't do those things and not be surrendered. Then you have just lied to yourself. Wake up. Stop lying to yourself. Tell the truth. Tell the truth to yourself. Tell yourself, shut up. Tell your heart to listen. I do it all the time. Yeah. You ain't got rent money? Shut up! This is God's plan. If you don't pay the rent, it ain't going to get paid. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, to, the first thing when you surrender means to agree to stop fighting. Alright? And stop hiding. This is a Webster Dictionary definition. It has nothing to do with godly principles. This is unbelievable. To agree to stop fighting, hiding, and resisting. Oh my God. What did Moses do for 40 years? He hid out. Thought he was a, a sheep herder, huh? Until God came to him. I guess he thought that he didn't have to surrender no more. I guess he thought that things didn't work out the way he planned. So what you got derailed? So what you got sidetracked? So what you got bad loser? So what you thought that you thought that you knew but you didn't know nothing because you didn't know nothing. And so you kind of give up. You give up on loving him supremely. You give up on uh, trusting him completely. And you certainly don't have obeying him wholeheartedly. So you unsurrender yourself just as we're going to learn today as Peter did multiple times. Yes, we can surrender and then unsurrender. We can surrender and then unsurrender. Yes, it happens. It happens to all the great men in the Bible. That's why we got to learn about it. Because it's so important. God says, first son, you have to agree to stop fighting. You have to agree to stop hiding from me. You have to agree to stop resisting me when I call you, when I draw you, when I convict you. See, that's God pulling on you and you resist him when you know better. Listen, and the definition says this, because you know <laughs> that you will not win or succeed. That is Western Dictionary of the word surrender. Sound like God made that word up, huh? 
But that's because the metadata is preaching it. It sounds a little different than when you read it or Google it. No. Because when you hear the word of God under the anointing, it is the what? It is the word of God. Remember when I said that? So, the first word is surrender. And once you have surrendered, you become surrendered. Once you have surrendered, you become surrendered. Which means this, ready? The word surrender, E-D, means to yield to the power and the control. That means you are no longer, when you become surrendered to God, you no longer control yourself. You no longer think for yourself where you're going to do what you want to do. For 120 years, what did Noah do? He built an ark. Back breaking work, hard and heavy work, ridiculed, uh, accused of being a Jesus freak, talked about his kids, was bullied. Can you imagine if he wasn't surrendered, what he would have done? But he surrendered. <laughs> he gave his whole heart. He yielded to the power of God. He knew that God would never let him down. He knew that even though he had to do this for this many years, that the power of God would sustain him to stay surrendered. He set his mind and his heart and his soul as one. He loved God supremely. He trusted God completely. Therefore, he obeyed him wholeheartedly. He lived a surrendered life unto God, that God, I will yield to your power and control. I will give up completely. I will agree to forego, especially for another, which is God. You see, the song says, I have left all the world to follow who? Jesus. See, you can't sing that song unless you surrender to know what it means. It means that I fully surrender. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of chasing. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of trying to do what the world wants me to do. I'm tired of trying to do what my wife wants me to do. I'm tired of trying to do what my, my mama wants me to do. I got to be my own person. Jesus, it's just me and you. I'm not going to be influenced by anybody else's persuasive measure. I'm going to be influenced by the power of God because I surrender. That means I yield myself not to the control of the world, not to the control of my wife, not to the control and manipulation of my children. Yeah, y'all slick. Devil been using y'all for years. But I'm going to yield to the power of God. And I ain't going to never, ever, ever, in the voice of Smokey from Friday, go back. And listen, this is how you're able to love God. God's supreme. There's nothing else above Him. This is how you're able to trust Him completely. It don't matter what they say about you. It don't matter how low you get. It don't matter what kind of circumstance you're in. You know that you know that you're going to trust Him. And then with that, you're able to have complete, absolute obedience. Because you are totally surrendered. Sometimes in life, we must surrender. So my question is, why not surrender to God? We surrender every day to our jobs. We surrender to our relationships. Even when we know what we should do and what we shouldn't do in them, we still surrender to them because somebody else other than yourself wants something that you don't want to do and you end up doing it anyway. Morally, spiritually, and physically. And then we surrender to uh, temptation. Oh yeah, we do that all day long. We surrender to pressure. What kind of pressure? Pure pressure. People pressure. Pressure that says social media pressure. Instagram pressure. Twitter pressure. Facebook pressure. Snapchat pressure. And it's pressure, pressure, pressure. Girlfriend pressure. Boyfriend pressure. God don't test you. Don't let him pressure. Just resist her. Listen, and then here's the biggest one. We surrender to our addictions all day long. I need it. I need it. Five more hours, please. Because if I know I'm going to lose, I'm internet. Hold on. You kids are out of control. 
And some of your daughters should be shaming yourself. Pressure. Addictions. Addiction to what? To drugs. To sex. To pornography. To stealing. To lying. Addictions. 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 You surrender all day long to the things of this world, but yet you won't surrender to the one who created the world. You surrender all day long to the idiocracies of this life, but yet you won't surrender to the giver of life. Amen. What's your problem? Mm -hmm. Can I tell you something? Can I talk to you? Will you listen? I got one question to ask. Why? That's all I want to know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jesus wants to know too. Why? Why? I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am he that was and he that it is and is to come. I am everything. I am the giver of life. I created the stars and the heaven. Why won't you surrender to me? But yet you rather listen to the lies and the distortion of the enemy that comes to take the word of God that you did not hide in your heart. Therefore, as lust was snooping around, Therefore, as addictions were snooping around, it found it. And it took it and it cast it out. And it replaced it with your miserable life that you have. And then you blame who? Your mama, the sister, God, my circumstances. Uh, uh, shut up. Blame yourself. Amen. Because you heard the word of God. And you chose to not listen. You chose to not hide in your heart. You chose to not change. And then you wonder why. What was to me? Yeah, what was to you? <laughs> so my question is this. Matthew 6, 24. Write it down. Sometimes in life we must surrender. And I just went over all the things we surrender to. So why not? My question was why not surrender to God? Listen, you can't serve two gods. Matthew 26 and 24 says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other. You will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money. You can't serve both God and the world. You can only serve one. Who will you surrender to? Who will you love completely? Oh, but I, but I need my stuff. Who will you obey? Who will you trust? I choose to surrender to God. I choose to yield to the power of God and let Him control my every move. And as this day, and from the day that I set forth to start this church and become a pastor, that has been my mission, to stay fully surrendered. So when the waves come, when temptation comes, when pressure comes, I will not be here. I will love God. Supreme. I will trust God completely. And I will obey God wholeheartedly. Because I will stay surrendered. If he says, Mike, don't do it, I'm not going to do it. Sometimes we fight our flesh and that's going to come. But that's just the flesh. And it's full of fear. It's full of insecurities. It's full of distrust. It's full of faithlessness. It's full of all the elements that take us from God, but yet we have to coexist with it. That's why they fight for control. That's why when you stop being surrendered, you give the advantage to your flesh. Even knowing what to do, you find yourself still doing it. And how do you get in that spot where you have to go back? You have to go back and repent and do your first work. That means you have to go back and renew the love you had with God. That means you have to start all over. A freshness, a newness that God requires us to do. And guess what? Guess what, my beloved? You can be 90 and you can be 9. And you will continually, continually to re-surrender yourself to God. Over and over and over and over again. You can't continue thinking that you're going to be surrendered one day and next week you find yourself in bed 
with another woman and you marry? Listen, when we surrender to God, now I'm going to make surrender sound good. Because I got some good stuff to tell you about. You think it's wimpy to be surrendered? <laughs> Somebody told you a lie. Listen, when we surrender to God, it doesn't mean that our life is over. What do you think you are, a monk now? Go live in a monastery? See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, have no fun. I stay in my little box with the door shut and I'm like this all day long. Well, golly, you ain't doing enough for God. You just staying in there. Jesus said go out into the world. He didn't say stay locked up in a house. If you got all that God in you, go out and preach and teach and baptize and lay hands and do the things that Jesus instructed us to do. Did he say, get saved, surrender to me, and lock yourself up in a monastery so nobody can see you? He said that I came to save all that is lost, not the 26 monks you're living with. All, the whole world, through Judea and Jerusalem and throughout the world. Why do we go surrender and lock ourselves up in the kitchen? Don't do it. You're being surrendered for to be like Moses. You're being surrendered to be like David. You're being surrendered to be like Jesus. You're being surrendered to be like Elijah. You're being surrendered to be like Ruth. You're being surrendered to be like Hannah. You're being surrendered to be like Abraham. You're being surrendered to be like Joseph. When we surrender, it doesn't mean that our life is over. What it means is the exact opposite, that your life is just beginning. You see, if you read the Bible, and you read about any story of any man and woman, when they became fully surrendered, guess what happened? Their life just began. Surrendering to God. Ready? This is the definition of surrendering to God. Surrendering to God is sacrificing your life are suffering in order to change what needs to be changed. What did Jesus do? What did Peter do? What did Paul do? They sacrificed their life in order to change what needed to be changed. That's surrender to God. So when you think about, I'm going to surrender to God, it can very well cost you your life. Are you ready to surrender that much of yourself? <gasps> but I still want to... I just need a little bit more time, Jesus. Time is not on your side. Don't tell me about time. We know nothing about time. We don't know the exact time, how to tell time, or what time it is. It's time to be about your father's business. In case you was looking for the other time. Time to get to the club, dog. Pop that collar. Ooh, she look good. Uh -huh. I'm gonna give my number. Hey girl, what you doing over there? I'm coming to get you. Bam! You dropped dead. Oh, damn! <laughs> whoa, whoa, what happened? Oh, you was in your car going to get a booty call. Got your little condos from Circle K. Bum, bum. Bam! I hit the car. Die! Put the rubber in your hand. Trojan stuck to your hand. Oh, Lord. You woke up a jungle. What am I doing with these? Sorry, Jesus. I can get rid of these. I told you I'm not like any other pastor. There ain't nobody like me. I only preach about what I've been through. I only shout about what the trials and tribulations I came through. So don't sit here and try to tell me about your marriage, drug addiction, your sexual addictions, or any kind of addiction you have. Because I've been there, done that, Holmes. That's why I didn't preach till I was 50. And I said, God, why? suffer everything, even this? Yes, yeah, son, because you're going to be real. And when you tell somebody how to get free, Amen. you're going to understand where they're coming from. I, listen, no lie. I was even disowned by my own parents. And guess what? My mama sits in the church today. Don't tell me about nothing you ain't been through. Oh, did it hurt? Oh, yeah. It hurt. I was in the middle of the church and gone. It tore my heart apart. And guess what? I was serving God. You mean it happens in the church? Yeah, that's where it's most painful. 
See, when you run into the church and you seeking shelter and you get boom in the church, guess what? That makes you hate God even more. But if you surrender, you say, you know what, God? The devil sits in that church. And I refuse to let him take away the goodness of the love that I have. But he did it to me for 17 years. So listen, don't tell me about anything you're going through. Don't think that I can't do that. I can. That's why I'm a pastor. Some pastors don't have a testimony. They just went to seminary and uh, got a pulpit. They ain't even went to nothing. So when they come and they minister to you, they give you some kind of dramatic 12-step situation. Well, this is what I think you should do, skip. No, I say, listen, the devil torments you. Back the day you think about what you want to do. You actually plan it and see it, put together logistically how you're going to do it before you even do it. So that's what we got to fight. We got to fight where it starts in your mind, not in the action. If we can stop sin in your mind and your thinking, you won't commit the action. That's why the Bible says, whatsoever a man thinketh, so he becomes. So you just got to know where the battle's at. God can not help you right when you're in the middle and you didn't step your foot in it. So now you're going to have to go through the motions. If it happens to cost you your life that day, that's just that's the stubbornness that you have. If it costs you your freedom, that's the stubbornness that it has. And you have nobody to blame but yourself. The only, only thing you surrender, when you surrender, you see, God often calls surrender people to do battle on his behalf. Oh, church, let me tell you something. He calls surrender people to go to war. I mean, I thought surrender was for punks. No, 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 no. When you surrender to God, He turns you into a Joshua. He turns you into a Caleb. He turns you into a David. He turns you into a Moses. He turns you into a Jesus. He turns you into a, a formidable force that will not bow or bend. Strength that can't be measured in this lifetime. Strength not of this earth, but strength of the Holy Spirit that it fills you. He turns you into a Peter. He turns you into a Paul. He turns you into a Stephen. He turns you into a mighty, mighty man and woman of God because you have surrendered. Surrendering is not for cowards. Woo! Or doormats. Right. Surrendering is not for cowards. Matter of fact, it's just the opposite. It takes a strong person to surrender to God, to love Him supremely, to trust Him completely, to obey Him wholeheartedly. You see, if you're lacking in any one of those, then you're not surrendered. Maybe you just surrender, but you're not being dead. You haven't fully committed to God's power. So you say, God, okay, I'm going to stop running. I'm going to stop fighting. I surrender. And then you just go home and you just sit on your butt all day long. I'm surrendering. <laughs> you know, you don't read your Bible. You don't go to church. You just surrender. I surrender. I, I'm done fighting. You see, but when you are surrendered, now you have surrendered the first definition to a power. Well, the power of God is what? It's the ability, the strength, and the authority to do whatever He pleases. So when we surrender to the power of God, now we're ready to be used. And this is why the Bible says God often uses surrender people to go to battle. You see, a surrender person don't go and just do work. There's their workers, missionary, God bless them, nuns, God bless them. And then there's those that go to battle like David. You come at me with a spear and a sword, but I come at you in the name of the God of Israel. And he swings his sling and he strikes him. The battle is like Joshua. He goes into the land. God says, your servant Moses is dead. But today, I will call you to lead the people over into the land that I promised their forefathers. Be of courage. Haven't I instructed you to be very strong and courageous? 
Haven't I told you to be courageous? You see, that's a warrior's call. God, you surrendered people to go do his battle. Because being surrendered is not for cowards. You ain't nobody's door, man, either. You are a child of the Most High God. Do you understand that? Yeah. When you think about being surrendered, you need to have some, some turn up in you. Right? You need to turn up. When you surrender, you need to turn up, G. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to be no wimp. You got to get with that. I'm surrendered. Step back, fool. If I lay hands on you. <laughs> no, in the name of Jesus, get it out. Surrendering doesn't mean you stop thinking. No. When you surrender, your thinking becomes rational. You use common sense. Paul says that we should not be ignorant concerning the things of God. So when you surrender to God, it doesn't mean that God wants to make you a robot. He doesn't want robot. People think when you surrender, you gotta lose all your tenacity. You gotta lose all your personality. That's a lie. I told you that being surrendered is not for cowards. I told you that being surrendered, God uses those kind of people to go to war. <laughs> and how many know the fight is not flesh and blood? It's a spiritual war of wickedness and darkness. You can't be no coward running up to no demon. Amen. The seven sons of Sita. And the name of Jesus that Paul preaches about, come out. <laughs> the demons come out and says, we know Paul, we know Jesus, but who are you? Pop, boom, boom, boom. To strip their clothes off and left them butt naked. And they ran home. <laughs> but we surrendered. <laughs> yeah. Wrong kind of surrender, huh? Listen, I told you I see the Bible in photograph. So that was just a photograph of that scene. That's exactly what happened. You can read it in the book of Acts. These are not stories that your pastor makes up. Okay? See, I don't have to know where the actual scripture is because see, I live through that generation of the church. I just have to know the word of God. I know what's in the book of Matthew somewhere, go find it. I know the word of God. See, we used to pride ourselves on this religious knowledge. That brother, if you don't know exactly where the scripture is, you can't say. Well, I don't remember God saying you can't say the scripture if you don't know what part it is. I, 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 I never remembered that of, at all. Did you? It's the word of God that I've hid in my heart that I might not sit against it. Not uh, Revelation 6 and 35, but what does it say? I don't know. But all I know is a good reference point. I didn't want to remember the word, I just remember where it was at. Yeah, I can tell you John 3.16, but what does it say? I don't know, I see it on the NFL every Sunday. John 3.16. Huh, wonder what that means. Yeah, I know some scriptures. Listen, don't get caught up in that religious battle. I, I've been doing this a long time, as far as being saved. I'm 50, I got saved today. I've been through every phase of the church. And I remember when they all came out when they got the anointing and they was like, you got to know the technical scripture. I said, you know what? You don't. You just got to know the word. Amen? So don't get caught up in that because in the end when you're called to stand up, God says, for you should not think not what you ought to say, but in that very moment it shall be given. I'm quite sure the Holy Spirit is just going to give you the words that carries weight. Not exactly where in the book of Isaiah where it's at. But the quote that Isaiah said, that's where the power is at. They just had to give it a name and a number so it could be chronologically in order as you read it through the Bible. That's it. Don't get caught up on that. Surrender doesn't mean that you stop thinking rationally or with common sense. Why would God waste the good mind that he gave you? You see, God gave you a mind for a reason. God doesn't want you to serve him like a robot. You know, same place, look the same, talk the same, no expression. Surrendering is not repressing. The word repress means to prevent or inhibit. The, the surrender does not repress your personality. Mm. Mm. All the church is a lie. You know how they tell you you got saved? And because you slipped, lost your temper, stumbled and fall, now you are being judged. You ain't saved. You ain't surrendered. Well then why did the Bible say that a righteous man will fall seven times till he's perfected? 
We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. For we say it is just a sinner who fell down and got up. So I love that verse. Yes. A saint. It's just yes. a sinner who fell down and got up. You know why? You know why he got up? Because he surrendered. Yep. He finally surrendered indeed. He says, I surrender to the power of God. I surrender to the authority. No longer do I want to do things my own way when I want to do it. No longer, Father, do I want to be controlled by the things of this world, by my flesh, by my desires of the flesh. I want to be controlled by you, Father. I want to do the things that are pleasing to you, Father. I want to worship you. I want to talk to you, Father. I'm tired of being somebody's doorstep. I'm not a coward, Father. I'm not, I'm not the tail. I'm the head. Father, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I don't have to be somebody's doorstep. I don't have to be a yes man. I can have my expression. I can have my strength. I can have my temper. Because these are the things that you gave me. And Father, you will use all that you've given me to do fight the kingdom of darkness. Yes. So therefore, I can surrender to you and I'm not going to be like Mike. I'm not going to be like Johnny. I'm going to be myself. Right. I can surrender to you and I can have my weaknesses and understand that in my weakness, you are strong, Father. Yes. I can surrender to you because I know I'm a work in progress. I'm always arriving but never arriving. So I surrender to you, God. Because I'd rather surrender to the maker of heaven and earth. Than the destroyer of my life. Yes. And when you think that way, you get a glimpse of what surrender is about. You get a glimpse of what the great patriots in the Bible went through. See, once you understand that surrender is not repressing your personality or diminishing it, surrender actually enhances it. If they thought you was cocky before Jesus, wait till they see you under the anointing. Uh huh. If they thought you was loving before Jesus, wait till they see you under the Lord. Don't take my kindness for weakness. Amen. I guess they did when Jesus went to the temple and walked everybody out of there. They was like, oh, the religious Pharisees, what did you see that? The Son of God, my butt. He made a whip and whipped those people, turned over all the money tables, ran all the cattle out. He did that on the synagogue. On the Sabbath? How can he do those things? <laughs> Son of God. No, Jesus was surrendered. Therefore, the warrior in him, not the coward, not the compassion, but the warrior. See, there's sometimes when God says that he often uses surrender people to do battle. What Jesus did in that temple was a battle move. Father, I surrender myself to you for this moment. Do as you will. The Holy Spirit said, go make a whip. Okay? He did have made a whip with the high tails on And I imagine as he was making them, oh, yeah, y'all think my God is weak? I told you there ain't no punk. Y'all better get a head start because I'm coming. I'm done. Now, I don't even care about tying that last one. And he went in there and wow, this is the house of God. And you have made it a den of things. You have desolated the temple. Get out! Yeah, that's Jesus. Sorry to break your heart, religious folks. That's Jesus. Yeah. That's a man totally surrendered. You better be glad it was Jesus and not Elijah. Elijah would say, God, if I be a man of God, may fire fall in that temple. Yeah, yeah, y'all can true. Compassion is Jesus. Okay? <laughs> that's right. He was surrendered. You see, Because when we surrender, it enhances us. Because the more we let God take over, the more truly we become our authentic self who God has called us to be. Amen? I think that's a good cutoff point. Dang it. Okay? So stand up. Man, this is going to be a good series, guys. Did you guys get something out of that? All right. You know, I didn't want to give you too much, but I wanted to give you just enough, okay? And, I, and, and this is going to be such, listen, 
it just totally ties in to the God's mouth series. You know, because when we surrender completely, we have to have those three main ingredients that we just preached about ingredients. We have to love God, we have to trust God, and we have to obey God. And when I get that teaching totally surrender, it's the same three ingredients. Love, trust, and obedience. And we've got to go over characters in the Bible. And we've got to learn about people in the Bible that surrendered. Something that you can take home and read and study. Characters in the Bible that will surrender to God. That totally surrendered to God. But just know this. Each sermon that we're getting is just a completion and a fulfillment of the first sermon. And you have to understand that this is, this is the Holy Spirit speaking to us how He wants us to learn what makes God smile. So you can even say what makes God smile is when we totally surrender. That makes Him smile also. Amen? Amen? Don't let this word go home and bring no change to your life. I didn't even go deep, but we're going to get deeper because we're not going to do any other things. The next Sunday we're going to go deeper. You better really, really understand what it means to surrender to God. God doesn't want you to surrender to anything, but you know, that's it. Not to your mom, not to your girlfriend, not to your job, not to your in-laws, not to anything that can control you. Not even to your own life. Nobody gets that kind of surrender from us. Surrendering to God is, is reverence, is high. You don't give that to a human. We're talking about surrendering in God. We're not talking about if you were an actual Vietnam vet and you had to surrender, okay, to the Vietnam. We're not talking about that. We're talking about surrendering to God spiritually, what it means spiritually. And we don't give that of flesh what is a spirit, right? We only give that of spirit, spirit. Amen? Amen? So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the word today. We thank you how you came and how you talked to us. We thank you, Father, how you're always, 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 always trying to teach us something. Father, I pray that as these people leave, Father, that not only would they have a sense of, of security that they actually learn something, but Father, that they would have a, a sense of desire. That these things that we hear, these things that we talk about, that we should desire them, Father. We should want to be like, we should gravitate to how do we love you supremely. We should gravitate to, to trusting you completely and obeying you wholeheartedly. Father, let us not lose vision of what we're doing. Let us know, Father, that we come here to get fed and to get knowledge and understanding that we can walk out of these doors and be victorious in our everyday living. And Father, as we walk out these doors and we become victorious in our everyday living, that you will begin to unction us and to use us for your power and your glory. And that, Father, that we will begin to share the word and speak the word in and out of season and change somebody's life and play it forward with the same word that we heard. That we would be the givers and the teachers of life, Father. That we would go out and not just keep this word in us, but we will share it with others to bring understanding who you are. Father, let us know that it's never about us. It's always about you. Father, I pray that you use these people to bring forth you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.